Welcome to Star Marks, everybody. We are a very funny podcast out of the Central Valley of California. This is an unsponsored episode. Uh, they got too scared, you know? Yeah, I think people got mad at the, the, the hashtag stop anime. They got scared. Um, they, 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 they don't have the infrastructure to support the Snark Marks bump that we give them, is what I've heard. <laughs> right, yeah. I've, I've heard it goes crazy, you know? The, yeah, crashing the... websites, people at their front gates, a lot of stuff, you know? Yeah. Like it's, trying to get into uh... Wonka's factory. <laughs> Yeah, we break we break down the walls between the consumer and the product, and uh, the the type of disruption that we cause yeah. is too grand. So this week we are all we about could, disruption. Yeah, we're we're just a couple disruptors, classic disruptors. Yeah, um, uh, Enron uh, gave us money this week to mention them. I don't know why <laughs> it was weird. Um, yeah. So uh, follow us on all the socials at Snark Marks Pod on Instagram at Snark Mark D on Twitter is Dusty at at Andrew Idell on Instagram is me. Uh, also subscribe to our YouTube channel. Uh, we are releasing all these in video form now, um, and so if you want to watch us, we're on there. But you can also still listen to us on Spotify. So yeah, pick your poison. See this golden curtain rod behind me. I've heard like, tell on Reddit that that is a Muslim prayer blanket. Thoughts? <laughs> well, Do you have a you comment know, on that? Only five times a day. Did you That's, hear about uh, that with uh, Obama? They uh, the, there was like a meme that would go around that all of our grandparents shared that said that Obama moved a uh, Muslim prayer blanket into the into the White House where he gave his speeches, <laughs> and it was it was like I think it was golden. I can't remember. It was like a, a flamboyantly colored blanket behind him when he would give his speeches. And uh, some internet sleuths who uh, were actually acting in good faith looked it up, and Bar- uh, not Barbara Bush, uh, Laura Bush had put that in the in the uh, in the White House <laughs> during the Muslim previous administration. Laura, Laura yeah. Bush, yeah. Uh, no, I did not know that was not one of the conspiracies that I was aware of. But yeah, that one know, was that one was fun. Of course, you know. Have you heard? I, of, have you heard about the Big Mike one? Huh? I've I've not heard about Big Mike. You don't no. know Big Mike? No. But, oh man, like... you haven't gotten in the weeds enough. Uh, <laughs> apparently, Michelle Obama's a man. Oh, that I am aware of yeah. as a conspiracy. Uh, big arms. So big arms. Is, I think the yeah manly. Yeah, people arms think if you saying. have if you have uh, muscle tone, you're a man. Yeah. But <laughs> yeah, I don't think those people are thinking like if you saw just her face, people would be like, "That's a girl face." Like if 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 a man showed up. <laughs> <laughs> like she, she, it's not the most feminine face in the world, right? But it, I'm, mm. yeah, that's a woman. Yeah, and also, if, even if yeah she were a man, mm-hmm. who cares? Well, like, it'd be, yeah, yeah. <laughs> let's, it'd be let's be honest. I don't care if, uh, like, I mean, I, I you know, I support if if you want to marry a man, all yeah. that stuff. If the president lied to us. <laughs> <laughs> and was what? married to a man the whole time that'd be kind of that'd be kind of interesting you know that'd uh, be wild sure but i yeah. like uh yeah we, we've know. got bigger fish to fry at this point, yeah i, I think it's uh I, I don't know that it should share the same space as my belief on the moon landing conspiracy which is like well if they faked it like how does that affect like that doesn't seem to affect me in any real way that i can <laughs> that i can see it affects me because uh, it bums me out. If the, if I found out that was fake, that's like finding yeah, for, out Je- Jeter's on steroids, bro. I'm jumping off a building if something. For the if record, I, like, for I sure don't, found out it was fake. You know, yeah. for the record, I don't think the moon landing is fake. But if no. it were, like, uh, very uh, unlikely were, to be fake. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> like if it were, who cares? Uh, I'm, I'm I'm starting to believe, and I listen. This is probably an obvious for a lot of people. I'm starting to believe a little of the JFK stuff. Okay. Um, no. not the, you know, not the wild shit, but that, uh, I, th- I was a huge Oswald acted alone guy for a long time. Yeah. Mm. And then you went to, then you went to Dallas and you I, saw it. Well, yeah, but th- still in that, I, I, I famously, uh, everybody knows this. Uh, yeah. it's, it's my, my, my opinion on this is far spread far and wide. I could have hit fucking Kennedy in the head with a rock from that window. Like, <laughs> Sorry, Jacob. Jacob's listening to me because Jacob has been been in the in the the same place. But I uh, look. I stood on the X and looked up at the window and went, "Yeah, he probably fucking can make that shot. Like that's not yeah. that hard. It's it's not as far as you think it is. Like uh, go, anybody who's been there, like the book depository is like right there. <laughs> it's yeah. not. Yeah, it's not I, right on top of you, but it is right there. I again, I'm I mostly just 
depend on Occam's razor. Like the most likely uh, answer is that Oswald acted alone. Mostly because I don't have faith in people to keep those kind of secrets for uh, for that long. Like, you know what I mean? Like, it's, well, it's there's tough. only a few people that would have really had to know. You know what I mean? Yeah, I get it's just like they, like, they killed the guy who did it. <clears throat> The right. uh, Jack Ruby killed him, right? And uh, they just a random guy just walks up to him and shoots him in the stomach on television <laughs> <laughs> because he's yeah. just mad. He said that I, I think he said that he doesn't he didn't want Jackie to have have to go through the grief of a trial. Okay, right. All right, yeah, Jack good, Ruby. <laughs> good for you, Jack Ruby. Uh, yeah, I I I can imagine that people were happy that that happened and that people capitalized on the aftermath yeah. of the thing that happened. Um, but I think the actual conspiracy, the, the only one that I've heard that makes some sense to me is that the guy in the, one of the guys in the car with him, his gun went off on accident. Yeah. Have you heard this one? I've heard that one, but I've, I feel like, I feel like we, like we have the video, right? Like a real good one. You know what I mean? So like, yeah. it looks like, it doesn't look like he gets shot by the guy in front and the gun, the gun would have to be pointed in a weird direction. All that. Anyway. Okay. This right. is conspiracy corner <laughs> with the snark marks. Uh, yeah. uh, I do, I, I do believe that Lee Harvey Oswald shot Kennedy, but you know, I feel like somebody might've been like, Hey, <laughs> you, you want to shoot Kennedy? Uh, but anyway, right. uh, you might be, you might be open to, yeah, I like, uh, just to end it. Yeah. I think that there is a possibility that more than one thing is true. That like Lee Harvey Oswald shot Kennedy, but also that he didn't do it just as a lone crazed gunman. You yeah, know? it wasn't a whim. But, it was. It's like the U.S. government went on quite a run, a, a you know, a, a Jordan esque run of killing their biggest public enemies <laughs> in the '60s. Yeah, right? Uh, they even got Lenin. Uh, no, I think <laughs> that was probably just a crazy guy who thought there were elves in his walls. Right? Isn't yeah. that what he th- thought? Yeah, he um, thought there were uh, little soldiers in his walls. Uh, <laughs> is at but, least what he says. You yeah, know? but I mean, they got Malcolm. They got they got. Uh, they, it's very convenient that all these people died. For the U.S. government, or <laughs> yeah. you know, anyway. They, anyway. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> but there, um, there's books about it. We don't have books about it. Read those. Uh, Don't don't watch a Hollywood movie and base all your opinions on it. But read books. (laughs) Um, So uh, we with today is our recap and of our 2023 goals podcast. I keep saying 20 and it bugs the shit out of me. 2023, but you sound weird saying 22. So you know, doomed. Uh, But uh, we're gonna we're gonna recap the goals that we said on our goals podcast. At the end of last year, which, by the way, was our first post rebrand podcast. So a happy year after the rebrand. Um, and then uh, we are going to discuss our 2024 goals for ourselves. We'll talk about if we made the 2023 20, goals and we will make new ones for 2024. But we're going to open the show with some daily trivia. We usually close the show with it. We're going to open it with open with it today as per Dusty's request. Well, I just figure we do the trivia now then we're not worried about getting the trivia in at the end and then more time for uh goals podcast uh discussion yeah because this is yeah. probably going to be one of our this isn't this probably isn't going to be a two-hour podcast but no i mean we, we like to rant I'm, i've been yeah we jabbering are verbose, my balls off since we started not, this you know yeah we have verbose if nothing else so we're going to start off with the dozen uh if you guys don't know the dozen is uh barstool sports their version of a daily trivia thing. Um, get rid of this. There's always ads on the screen. Um, so there's nine questions, uh, different categories. Um, they range from pop culture to sports uh, and like food and restaurants and a bunch of stuff. So um, I've already done this one today. I did not do, I did not fare well on this one very well today, but I think you're going to do a lot better than I did. I'm so, concerned because cars is one of the categories. I am bad at cars. So did I get car? If I got cars correct, I'll give it to us because we usually do these together. So yeah. if I get, if, if you get, if you don't know the answer to one of the ones that I got correct, I'm going to count it for us. Cause we do these as a team, but I'm not going to cheat because I know the answers to the rest of them. Right. Right. So, uh, which one do you want to start with? Uh, let's just start top left. Let's go NFL. Okay. 
Uh, after a successful career at Iowa, the Jets drafted this running back in 2009 who would total over 3,400 rushing yards in four seasons with the team. I do not know who this person is. I saw the answer earlier. Still don't remember who it was. So uh, we'll skip that one. Yep. Um, Normally from... pretty Go good ahead. at the NFL. I'm bad. I'm bad at anything yeah. football. Um, <laughs> I'll get one every once in a while. I got a good football one last, yesterday, but I, I, I'm pretty useless at anything football. This at the time, um, oh, this is college football. This at the time, American Athletic Conference School went 13 and 0 during the 2021 season, earning a spot in the college football playoff, losing 27 to six versus Alabama in the semifinals. Um, I'm just gonna say Boise State because I know okay. Boise State was undefeated for a long time. I don't think they're in the ACC. That is not the correct answer. Um, okay. And then uh, MLB. I got this one right, but I'll give you a chance here. Uh, corner infielders Ryan Klesko and Phil Nevin combined for 71 home runs and were all-stars in 2001 while playing for what National League team? I don't know, but if you got it, then... Yeah, it's the San Diego Padres. Okay. Um, I would yeah. have never guessed the San Diego Padres. Yeah, yeah I'm, I'm pretty good at the MLB ones. That, that yeah. saves my butt a lot because you guys get a dumb movie one or something, right? And I'm like, oh, yeah. thank God there's an MLB one. But even I miss some of those sometimes. So uh, Cars is going to be our next one. Denali, I got this one right. So, Denali is a nameplate used for the highest trim level for vehicles from what automotive brand? Um, is that Ferrari? It is GMC. Oh, wow. Oh, the GMC Denali. Okay. And it's because the Yukon Denali. Remember? Remember yeah. those? <laughs> uh, so, this is a celebrity mashup. I did not get this uh, one right. Let's do this one quick uh, because the audio <laughs> listeners, yeah. Yeah, Just, I'm bad at every one of these. So, let's see. We've got a man with short hair on the outside and a uh, pretty looking woman in the middle. Any idea? Um, is that Adam Driver and, uh, ah, shit, what's her, what's her name? Um, Tilda Swinton. Uh, no, no, it's neither. Okay. Nope. It's neither. It's Jason Bateman and somebody else. I can't remember who the girl is. Uh, chain restaurants. Munchkins are a famous sweet treat item associated with what chain? Munchkins. I can't remember no, which one this was. I got I this got wrong, it. so we'll, we'll skip. Uh, television. Since 2020, Will Arnett has hosted the reality competition series Lego Masters, airing on what major network? Fox. Oh, you got that one? Did you I get got that, that one? one. Holy shit, I didn't get that <laughs> <laughs> um, movies. So, Susan Sarandon and Gina Davis each received Best Astor Actress Oscar nominations for this 1991 Ridley Scott directed film featuring Harvey Keitel and a young Brad Pitt. That is Thelma and Louise. It certainly is. Uh, Kai got on to me for not getting that one correct. Um, music. Unwritten and Pocket Full of Sunshine were hit songs released in the 2000s by what British singer songwriter? Oh man, I got a bucket bottle, bucket bottle, bucket bottle. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I don't remember her name. Her name is, I believe, I'm gonna get, I'm, 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 I'm gonna write it down, even though we did not get this one correct. Natasha Bedingfield. <laughs> okay, would have never, <laughs> would have never got it. So as a team, we got five. Okay, we got five on that one. I'm comfortable None. with that. Yeah, 69% of people got the betting field one correct. Um, the weird pool of people take these because, and I think some people cheat because you'll see like the NFL one, 23% people, twenty three percent of people got that NFL one, but most of the time it's like 80% of people get the NFL one and then they'll get the Natasha betting field question correct as well. Right. Interesting. Uh, who was um, the running back? The running back was Sean Green. Nope. <laughs> Yeah, uh, college football, it is Cincinnati, that answer. Um, chain restaurant was Dunkin' Donuts. Uh, okay. Yeah. yeah. Everybody runs on Dunkin', right? And yeah. then celebrity mashup, that is Kate Blanchett and Jason Bateman. Kate Blanchett, dang it. I had the Bateman with... one. I had Bateman, but I didn't have Blanchett. I'm actually okay <laughs> at that, but I'm I'm really bad at celebrity like women. Like, I don't uh, know these people. I don't know what Emily Blunt looks like, Dusty. I, yeah, I just, I can never figure it out. Like, yeah. 
the it always looks like a cursed image to me. The head is always like kind of smushed. <laughs> I just I don't like it. I try, so, <laughs> you know, every time. But I, you I give don't it the like old it. college try. Yeah. Um, so we'll go on to the uh, Rotten Tomatoes daily movie trivia. Um, it gives you uh, f- clues to you got to guess the movie title with the clues that it gives you. Uh, the first clue is this is a one word movie title. Um, it's PG 1980s uh, 1980. It's a kids and family comedy. It got a 58% critic score and a 39% audience score. 1980. Nothing's jumping out to me. There's no Beethoven. Uh, that was that was too late, no. right? Beethoven yeah, was, was more recent. Um, <laughs> let's try. Yeah, that's a... Let's try Rad. Okay. <laughs> Hit me with Rad. I bet it's not even on the list. <laughs> I get pissed when it's not on the list, but that saves me. You know what I mean? Right, yeah. I guess sometimes when I'm like, okay, maybe, and then I put it in and it's not even an option. I'm like, oh, okay, well, it's definitely not that. Yeah, so let's go next clip. Takes one of the most artificial and limiting of art forms, the comic strip, and raises it to the high level of comedy and high spirits. Was there a Garfield movie in 1980? No, not that Cer- I'm... Certainly not Dilbert. No, not that I'm aware of. A peanuts? One word? Peanuts, maybe. Let's give it a Peanuts. <laughs> you cool with trying that? No, that's three yeah. words. The Peanuts movie. That's the only one. Oh, that's, that's okay. Pissed at that. Thought Marmaduke? we got that one. <laughs> Marmaduke. Is that a comic strip? Yeah. It's a funny dog. <laughs> he's, he's we got that one the... wrong. Okay. Clue number three. You wonder how on earth Altman did it equally often... You feel you are watching a wacky masterpiece, the like of which you've never seen before. Is this Mash? It's not a Mash. Mash it was Mash a movie? Yeah. There's a movie called Mash. Yeah, but there I don't think there's a comic strip called Mash. But Robert Altman directed Mash, so they made a Mash movie. Uh huh. I'm still <laughs> the stuck on that before before the show. I think. No fucking way, dude. Yeah. Um, well, we'll try it, but it, I'd, cause I it's, doubt it that that's it. But... Yeah. Nope. Uh, clue number four. One succumbs to a state of glazed indifference. Oh, these are, by the way, uh, just so everybody knows, th- these are critics' reviews. Um, one succumbs to a state of glazed indifference. The fault is not in the perform- performances by Williams. Oh, Popeye. Is this Popeye? Oh, this could be Popeye. Uh, the fault is not in the performances by Williams and Duvall, but rather, I suspect, in Altman's refusal to allow any movie star to violate the one-dimensional texture he's created. We're going to try I, Popeye. I bet you nailed it. Nailed it. It was Popeye. I didn't know Popeye was so reviled. Uh, I'm strong to the finish when I eats me spinach. Yeah. How could it be good, Dusty? I, yeah, I, got, I don't know how it could. But there's a lot of talented people. Robert Duvall, Robin Williams, Robert Altman. Uh, I think that's Shelley Duvall. Oh, Shelley Duvall, yes. Sorry. The the uh, funny-looking girl from... Uh, from The Shining. From The Shining. Yeah. I believe she plays olive oil in that yeah. movie. My, 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 my. <laughs> She's a perfect uh, olive oil. Yeah. Funky-looking, skinny. Yeah, I think that's the same year that The Shining comes out. Big year for uh, really? Shelley Duvall. Yeah, <laughs> she's in The Shining and, <laughs> I and look Papa. The Shining came out, and you're probably correct. Yeah, 1980. Goddamn, yeah. what a year for Shelley Duvall. Um, all right, we will uh, finish off with the box office game. Let's do it. Uh, this is uh. It gives us uh, five movies that came out all in the same week. This week is December 10th, 2010, the weekend of December 10th, 2010. It'll tell us the distributor, how much money it made that week, and how much money it had made at that point. Um, And, uh, yeah, it's ranked. So uh, the first movie is 20th Century Fox made the movie. Um $24 $24 million it made in its first weekend in 2010. And it, uh, yeah, that's all we got. And it's new. 
So it's yeah, number new. one. It's, it's first, first week. week. Uh, give me the tagline. The tagline is return to magic, return to hope, return to Narnia. Okay, let's see. Uh, um. <laughs> the Chronicles. So would this be part the would this be like Prince Caspian or some shit? Or is this I think this is Prince Caspian. We missed it. Which one is it? The Voyage, the Voyage of Dawn Treader? The, the Voyage of the Dawn Treader? Nailed it. Um, okay. <clears throat> so, yeah, so this is the <laughs> the Chronicles of Nardia, The Voyage of the Dawn Treader. I, listen, if you gave me unlimited guesses as to what the other Narnia movie was called. Yeah. Did you know there was one called The Voyage of the Dawn Treader? I did, but only because I had the books. So. Oh, yeah. Uh, they probably went by what the books were. I only watched yeah. that shitty BBC 1981. You never yeah. saw the the Lion, the Witch, and the Wardrobe ver, of this version of them is not terrible. It's not great, but it's not like terrible. Um, yeah, you can't you can't be surprised. I haven't seen that though. You know. Yeah, I guess. <laughs> so. um, the second movie is a Sony picture. Also, it made new. sixteen million dollars that week, and it's also mm-hmm. brand new. First week on the on the docket. I don't think that this was a time when I was the going. To, yeah. When I was I was riding the rails, uh, so I don't think I was going to the movies quite as often. Um, I'm gonna need that tagline. It all started when he met a woman. Oh, that's good. <laughs> that gives us a lot of information. Uh huh. Once again, this is a uh, 2010 movie. It came out December 10th, the weekend of December 10th, at least. Uh, Sony Pictures, 16.4 million. Do you want an actor? <laughs> yeah, give me the first actor. Johnny Depp. Okay. So um, there's uh is this Secret Window? No, this is later than Secret Window. It all really? started in, yeah. Secret Window is like 2006, I think. 2005. Uh it all started when he met a woman. Um yeah. Secret Window is 2004. God damn. <laughs> Give me that uh, second actor there. Angelina Jolie. I knew it was Angelina Jolie. What is the name? You knew it was Angelina Jolie. I, I like. I, I oh, you know a, the movie. Well, I had a thought in my mind that it was Angelina Jolie. Um, shit, what is the name of this movie? I, I don't know. I don't know. Let, let, let's skip it for now. All right. Number three is a Disney movie. This is okay. its third week on the uh, docket. Um, it had, at that point, made $115 million, in its, and it's in its third week. It made $14 million this week. Okay. Um, give me the tagline. They're taking adventure to new lengths. There's something in lengths. Yeah, like, is uh, this Tron Legacy? Oh, you think so? I feel like Tron Legacy is newer than that. No. Um, is this like uh, what's the Rapunzel situation? Oh, Tangled, maybe. Tangled. You might be right. Yeah, that's a good guess. Because of the lengths. <laughs> the lengths, you see. Correct. Look at me. Look at you. Really um, helping me out. Number four, Warner Warner Brothers. Okay. Um, this is its fourth week. It has made two hundred fifty-seven million dollars so far. It made eight million this week. Whoa. It's a big okay. One. It's a pretty big one. Yeah, it's been out four weeks. Um, give me the tagline. One way, one fate, one hero. Oh, good. <laughs> Yeah. Um does not help very much. No. Once again, this is a Warner Brothers movie. Came out the weekend of well, came out four week there's the fourth week is December tenth. Okay. It came out in November. So it's not a Batman and it's not a Superman. Um, are we doing we're doing superheroes at that time. There are superheroes, yeah. But this When did is, Iron Man 
one come out? Iron Man's two thousand eight. Okay, so we're we're in we're in that yeah, area. But those are all summer movies. Um, give me the actor. Actor one is Daniel Radcliffe. Oh shit! It's uh, <laughs> Harry Potter and the which Deathly Hallows. I don't know which one came out in twenty ten. Dog. Part one, I think. Correct. Correct, Amundo. Hey. One way, one fate, one hero. I feel like that's not fair because there's three heroes in that movie. Well, I mean, Harry's got to be the ultimate hero, but <laughs> well, and in part one, that's a weird tagline for part one. I I always forget about the Harry Potter movies. Like uh, this one. Oh yeah, especially since it's Warner Bros. Yeah. What are we thinking? Um, I should fucking thought of that. Uh, 20th century. No, I would. I think the the one thing would have fucked me up because there's a bunch yeah. of heroes. Yeah, I know there's one guy, but the Shebang Bang's named after him. But right, um, it's Harry Potter's. Yeah, twentieth Century Fox. Uh, it has made seventy four million dollars so far. It's in, in its fifth week this week. It made three point seven million dollars. All right, hit me with that tagline. One million tons, one hundred thousand lives, one hundred minutes. Something huge, Dusty. <laughs> yeah. A million tons, hundred thousand lives, one hundred minutes. Jesus. Is there some asteroid movie at the time? Is there some uh, big bomb movie at the time? Yeah, um, it's like a heist sounding kind of thing. Um, but I don't have a inkling. With that first actor? Yeah, hit me with that first actor. Denzel Washington. Is um, that the one where he is a drunk pilot? No, I believe this is Unstoppable, the train movie. A uh, hundred thousand lives? It's correct. What the fuck? <laughs> well, if it like if the train runs into oh, it's transporting deadly toxic chemicals. Yeah, that's uh, they got to stop that train. <laughs> you know what I mean. <laughs> Yep, the... Chris Pine. Okay, so we got one more. Uh, we got that number two that we didn't get. It all started when he met a woman, Johnny Depp, Angelina Jolie. Yeah. Um, give me the third actor. We might as well run through the situation. Paul Bettany is the third actor in that one. Dude, I I know what this movie is. I'm going to be so mad. Uh, give me the director. Dusty, you know it makes me happy when you're mad. Florian Henkel von Donnersmark. Oh, it's a Don von Donnersmark. <laughs> yeah. Uh, no, give me the plot. I don't it's know. It's a von Donnersmark picture. Yeah. The whole thing? Yeah. yeah. Hit me with the... American tourist Frank meets, meets mysterious British woman Elsie on the train to Venice. Romance seems to bud, but there is more to her than meets the eye. This movie is called The Tourist. The tourist. The tourist. Bang. Forty yeah. seventh percentile. We took a shit on that one, Dusty. Yeah. Well, look at the look at the movies in this top five. Like, aside from Harry Potter, none of these movies have any uh, lasting power. You know, maybe Tangled, I guess. But like, who cares this about is the tourist? A... I didn't even know the number one movie existed. Right. That's what I'm saying is there's like there's nothing to latch on to uh culturally here. And the taglines are bad, you know. And we often talk about uh taglines for movies, most of them stink. I feel like I could be a good tagline writer. Yeah. But there are so um, very few uh who will survive and what will be left of them <laughs> to go around, you know. Yeah. So uh you know, Okay, okay, performance. All right, we Look, we've, we've, we 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 battled. We bounce back. You know, the other day I scored a thousand points on the Rotten Tomato game or on the, Do, the box office game. Doesn't know? matter if it's not on screen. You know what I mean? <laughs> That's right. Um, so uh, we'll go. We'll go. We'll go forward with the goals. Uh, the, goal, the goals that we got. Um, I say we go one at a time. Okay. You recap your goals. You announce new goals. Um, okay. I went first last time. What would you prefer to do this time? 
Well, I guess it's only fair to trade him off, right? Okay. Um. Okay, so do one goal from last year and then announce the goal for this year? I say you just run down them. Okay. Or however you want to do it, but I, I, the way I'm probably going to do it is run down the goals from last year and then uh, uh, and then announce my new goals, except for a couple of them uh, I'm going to run back. <laughs> uh, okay, yeah. Um, yeah. So, number one, uh, I wanted to listen to 25 audiobooks this year. Failed. Uh, <laughs> failed on my goal. Only listened to uh, 21 audiobooks. So didn't 21 quite, audiobooks is pretty good though. Didn't quite make it. Um, there's a lot of stuff competing for my time, uh, in entertainment, you know? Yeah. Uh, 10 wanted to listen to 10 new albums. The, this last year, 2023 did not make it. <laughs> <laughs> Was comforted by old music. I already like for most of the year. Did you listen uh, to any new albums this year? I did a couple of them, but I did. Maybe this could be a podcast for another day. I know we have a music one that we want to do with Jacob. I'm yeah. not really, not really listening to that much music these days. Uh, you yeah, know? I'm, I'm all podcasts and uh, and old radio uh, shows. I don't, I, yeah. I listen to music sometimes, but not very often. Yeah, unless it's to play drums to it, um, or like in the car with my wife, we'll listen. To, but then we have like playlists that we listen to. So I don't want to be yeah. like, hey, listen to this band neither one of us has ever heard so I can reach this goal for the podcast. Uh, yeah. Well, so, part of part of these recap podcasts, this, this is what <laughs> we're, we're going to find every year that we do this, is that every once in a while you set a goal and then you quickly realize, dumb goal to set. You, you, you know what I mean? Yeah, not a, not a goal that uh, I, can, I can stay with. Uh, number yeah. three, learn the John Bonham classic triplets. Goal achieved. Look I, at you, dude. That's a good one. I can play them. I need uh, to continue to uh, practice them to get them perfect, but I can do it. Uh, and I can do it within the context of a song. I can. I know the practice, the sticking, and all of that. So, goal achieved. That's sick. Hell yes. yeah. <laughs> Bottom triplets. Um, 10,000 steps, close all my rings six days a week. Uh, not achieved, but okay. did uh, a lot of walking, you know, a fair, like, uh, did a fair amount of closing those rings. Okay. Just, are you happy? Are you happy with it? Uh, I, it will roll into 2024. So okay. we'll get to that. Uh, number five, no going into debt for Christmas by earlier than December 24th, 23rd goal failed. Uh, <laughs> uh, or par- partially failed some stuff bought before december 23rd some stuff not bought before december 23rd yeah uh, you know so i know how it goes man improving all constantly trying to improve you know yeah uh so last year not great on those goals but good 2023 bought a house uh celebrated first wedding anniversary you know, uh, did some personal, uh, growth, did some professional yeah, growth dude. still, you know, pretty good. Yeah, Dusty, Dusty got a promotion, got a promotion. Uh, and then they changed healthcare providers. So they'll be taking that money <laughs> so that I have. Health oh, insurance. so it, <laughs> <laughs> I didn't know that your no, insurance got more expensive. <laughs> that's how they get you. Yeah. That sucks ass. Uh, yeah. well, uh, yeah, that's the thing. Uh, you know, I, 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 we'll, we'll see how I did on my goals, but it's, yeah. it's this is a this is a growth <laughs> exercise. If you the the goals helped you, setting goals helps you better yourself, even if you don't reach the specific goals that you set. Right. So, right. Um, yeah. Uh, are, is, is that all your goals from last year? Those are all my goals from last year. Okay, so I want a, a reminder for everybody of the SMART acronym for goal setting. Uh, they need to be specific, measurable, achievable, realistic, and timely. So it's okay if though if your new goals don't meet all those criteria. It's totally right. fine. But that is a good uh, structure through which you can filter certain goals. You know what I mean? Yeah. Um, I think the 2024 goals are 
uh, meeting most of the, those okay. criteria. So, okay. uh, 2024 goal one, I'm, I live very close to a planet fitness. So this Saturday I'm going to sign up for the gym. And then my goal is to go consistently, uh, which to me would be three times a week. Okay. So, uh, which is probably Saturday, Sunday, someday during the week. Okay. Just, I like that. Go to the gym. Cause, uh, whether or not uh, it's about weight loss or about strength training or about any of those things, just being good to your body and moving and uh, trying to do things positive for your body can never have bad results for you. I don't Unless, think. Donald Trump believes that you only have a, you have a finite amount of heartbeats in your life. <laughs> and if you, the, the, the harder your, your heart goes, the more of those you're wasting. Uh, but uh, and he really, from what I understand, really believes that. <laughs> but uh, oh, yeah. so uh, th- that three days a week was one of my goals this year. So uh, yeah. it, it, moving your body is important. Um, sedentary uh, lifestyles is proven to be very bad for you. Dusty works in an office. I work uh, moving around quite often, but a lot of time I do spend sitting. I edit this damn podcast. I sit here making dumb videos and uh, I, I end up sitting on my right here in this chair for a long time and I feel it, you know, so yeah. uh, it's good for your bones. It's good for your joints, good for your muscles and it makes you feel better. So it's a good goal. Yeah. Uh, second goal. I want to wake up earlier um, because I struggle with waking up early to be able to just have it, it doesn't really matter. Like, if I wake up earlier, I can use that time, even if it's not time spent, say, walking on a treadmill or going to the gym or whatever. Even if it were just to uh, sit for half an hour extra to get myself ready for the morning, getting up earlier is important to me because then I feel less stressed about the morning. And if it can help me achieve other goals, then I think that's helpful. So... 6.30 6.30 is the uh, shooting time okay. that I'm going for. And you want, you want the, we, we're not going to be completely measurable, so you're not going to say 6.30 every day because every once in a while you need a treat. You know what I mean? But right. you're thinking 6.30 consistently. Right. 6.30 okay. consistently. That way, if I want to go for a walk in the morning to get some of my movement goals out of the way, or if I want to put 30 minutes towards Diablo 4 and just have, yeah. you know, but then... I get ready for work sooner. I get to work sooner. I don't really see a negative side aside from I hate getting up early. So yeah. I have to train myself to want to do that. But the ironic thing, which I know lots of people talk about is like, I know it's good for me. I know it's good. If I get up earlier, I just can't do it. And I, I don't like to do it. And so that's what makes it hard. Yeah. That's or, a tough thing. Um, that was going to be one of my goals. I just couldn't find out the best way to measure it. Uh, yeah. But um, I need to get to bed earlier. My problem is I stay up super late like an idiot. And yeah. uh, if I go to bed at one or two, I'm not going to get up at a decent time in the morning. Right. You know, so <laughs> yeah. uh, I, got I need caught to get to bed early. Uh, watching uh, videos of Conan O'Brien with various uh, animals as his guests over the years. There was a whole YouTube of, uh, you know, whatever the guy brings out the animals and does the little yeah. thing. Watched like five of those whenever I was ready for bed. And then suddenly an hour's went by. And it's like, oh man, like <laughs> I needed that hour probably more than I needed yeah, to watch I, these. Yeah, it's funny. I, I intentionally didn't, I don't have a TV in my room, uh, but I find myself going to bed with my phone in my hand watching like stupid Norm MacDonald clips on YouTube. Yep. Because I am, and then and then falling asleep way too late. So I need to get to bed earlier. So I I resonate with that goal. Yep. That's a good one. Uh, third, I would like to put uh, even just a little bit of money in my savings account each paycheck. Okay, I'm talking twenty bucks. Yeah, twenty bucks in the savings account. And I sound like a real uh, uh, person who doesn't have it together to be almost 40 years old and be like, I need to start saving a little bit of money each, <laughs> each paycheck. But it listen, just, you'd be surprised how rare it is. You just uh, hear from the people who do it. Yeah. It's, it's, it's always hard. And if, and if you struggle with it, the way that I struggle with it, I empathize. Cause the thing is not that I don't want to do it. It's just hard to do. Um, 
but I don't think that I will ultimately miss that $20. Um, and I'll feel a lot better once that $20 has started to compound itself. And then I have a little bit of a cushion for what inevitably uh, is going to be some sort of disaster, uh, new tires or oil changes or whatever these things are, you know, that need to happen. Yeah, you got to get a, a boil drained or something like that. <laughs> right. You got to go to the doctor for the for that cyst that won't go away. Uh <laughs> You eventually, you you got you eventually got to take care of that cyst, you know. Yeah, that's <laughs> staring down the barrel. Um, in conjunction with my saving twenty dollars, I wish to order food much less than I order it now. <laughs> yeah, because ordering food, the convenience of ordering food is the death of me. Um, like it, it just and it just piles up, and before I know it, I've ordered three the uh, three things you know in a week and now that money's gone and yeah, uh, <laughs> you've ordered twenty seven dollars in food and spent seventy five dollars on it right the breakfast burritos were never worth it you know the <laughs> as much as I loved them um so I'm saying no more than twice a month because I don't think that it's realistic to never order food because things happen or you want to treat one day or whatever so I'm saying yeah. two times you or deserve- less a month does not seem insane, but that gives me once every two weeks, I can splurge a little bit and order some food uh, and have it delivered. (laughs) That makes sense. Yeah. Um, I would like to read five actual books this year. I'm stealing your goal from last year. Uh, Okay. Because I listen to a lot of audio books and I enjoy that medium, but I think, uh, and this is partly my own doing, but like I'm constantly bombarding myself with like uh, I'm either watching TV or I'm listening to something or I'm watching something on my phone or I'm doing something that occupies my mind. <clears throat> and I think books also occupy your mind, but they give you like time to relax and also let your mind sort of rest. I don't know if that makes sense. Uh, well, yeah, and you're you're kind of, I, I fall victim to it too. I'm just constantly being like, I constantly have digital stimuli. Yeah. I'm driving. I'm, I, I drive to the store. I'm listening to a podcast on the way to the store. I put headphones in, listen to podcast in the store. I come listen to podcast on the way home. I'm getting, I'm cooking the food that I bought at the store. I've got something planned uh, yeah. all the way from when I wake up to where I go to bed, I'm either watching something or hearing something or something like that where it's not, I'm not manually consuming information. I am passively consuming information. Right. If I'm, and what I found with reading is uh, it also, you get better at it. It's a muscle. So like uh, my reading, uh, not necessarily, my comprehension is always pretty much fine. But the more that I read, the less I have to go back and reread the last sentence that I just read because I wasn't paying attention while I was reading it. Right. Um, you start to get that focus and that, and I, I, it's got to be good for your brain. Working out your brain is very important. So. Right. Yeah. And I'm like, if I'm in the shower, I'm listening to a podcast. If I'm getting ready, I'm listening to a podcast. If I'm, when I go on walks, I'm listening to a book or doing something. And it seems like it would be good, at, even if it's just to be mindful of sitting and not having the TV or radio or phone playing something and just reading a book. Seems like a, a restful activity the quietness itself is is valuable and nice so i think think that's a good goal so i'm going with that and then uh finally we'll see how it goes um but i i looked it up and they say that between four and eight pounds a month is a healthy amount of weight to lose so i think in this year i would like to lose 60 pounds hell yeah dude that's five pounds a month which does not okay. seem impossible. That's like one pound a week, essentially. Yeah. You know, 1.2 pounds a week. So okay. um, just because like I would feel better about myself, my health would certainly improve. I would like uh, to do that for myself. Uh, for the outside aesthetic, certainly I think that I would feel better. Well, Everybody I, cares I, about that, right? You can't right. lie that you, you know. You know, but I think doing it for me is important and 
having that as a motivating thing is also important. So those are the goals. So I we'll like see, that one. We'll, we'll see where that's, it goes. But that's, that's good. we 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 should do like mid mid season goal <laughs> check in, uh, <laughs> check, ins, check yeah. in, um, or maybe like a quarterly goal check in, but not a full episode where we just yeah. kind of real quick recap it on the show. Uh, because like I said, goals are very important. Even if you don't meet them, if they at least um, if you're thinking about elicit them. an attempt. Yeah. Like then, then they're then they're valuable, and um, I hope that anybody listening uh, sees that, and that you've got you know one day because t- today is the last day of of twenty twenty three. So j- jump on that shit. You know what I mean? Yeah. Um, so that that's good. I like your goals. Those are good ones. Um, it's not like I'm the arbiter of what's a good goal and what's a bad goal, but I'm just yeah. giving you some. You know. Um. So for my goals in twenty twenty three, um. I had uh, one, two, three. I think I wrote. I think I did five goals. Um, I wanted to budget. I wanted to like write down all the shit that I spend, all the shit that I get in, and uh, and kind of balance everything out and figure it out. Didn't do that. Um, <laughs> didn't even really tr- like. I kind of like tried because I my my the reason that I wanted to budget is because I wanted to move and I wanted to get my own place. And I have moved and I have gotten my own place and I have sustained in doing that. So while I did fail at that goal, I'll take the L in that situation. No. Um, thinking about that and, and starting to structure my money uh, got me to a place where I can uh, live in Bakersfield and enjoy myself. So yeah, um, I would say maybe not uh, in a pass fail situation, maybe you consider that a fail, but I would say yeah, for like sure. passively, like you did budget because you figured out how you could live on your own and not either be destitute or not be able to pay your shit. So, you know, yeah, I still, I still like keep the illusion of having money, you know? So, um, (laughs) right. Uh, yeah. And then, uh, the, the next one, uh, I wanted to be 147 pounds. Um, I did not meet that goal, unfortunately. Um, I got up to like close to 145. Like I think the the highest I actually got on a scale was 143, but I think I like a little bit before I started losing weight between then and starting to lose weight, I uh I probably gained a few. So I probably got up to like 145, uh which I'm happy with. But my health uh didn't, wasn't great towards the end of the year. So uh it was hard to eat and I I haven't weighed myself, but I'm definitely not 145 pounds right now. Um, but I'm, I'm not really discouraged by that one. I tried. I, and that one, I, I gave it a yeah. shot and it's hard for me to gain weight. You know yeah. what I mean? Well, and yeah, so, for the people who are listening, who are screaming into the void, uh, I know. Andrew is a person who needs to gain weight, uh, because of his, his thin, his thinliness that he yeah, already Dusty, has. Dusty has seen me at less than 120 pounds, uh, yeah. for an extended period of time. So, um, the fact that I'm easy above 130 now yeah um is and great good. And um 147 healthily for would be healthy weight for andrew so yeah you know, yeah i'd still ish. be a thin guy but I, yeah. I i wouldn't i wouldn't people wouldn't see me and go wow that guy's skinny um but um i'm i'm happy with that one yeah. um i had th- three three times a week going to the gym on average um if you averaged it out i did not meet that one um I I don't think I got any of my goals this year, but uh, <laughs> uh, I, I, I I tried. Um, yeah. I went three times a week, easily most weeks, probably at least forty out of fifty two weeks. I went three days a week. Um, I didn't stop. Like it's not like oh the last month I've been a real piece of shit or anything like that. It's like um, there were there were weeks when I I didn't feel good. There were weeks when I was very busy. There were weeks when I was out of town, stuff like that, and I just didn't. On the weeks that I could go, I didn't. I think only like twice this year. I went four times in a week. Um, so uh, like I said, I didn't meet that goal, but I did uh, pretty well. I went consistently. Yeah. I'm still going consistently. Like I went, was it yesterday? Yesterday or two days ago. I'm gonna go tomorrow. So um, I've. I I think it's pretty easy. Pretty easily, I went forty out of fifty-two weeks. I went three days a week, and then there was only like one or two weeks that I didn't go at all. And I was either one week I had an injury, and then another week I was in Idaho. So, yeah, and I I think that's the perfect example 
of what you're talking about and hopefully what the the main crux of the episode is if it motivates anybody is like you thought about it as a goal for most of the year like well yeah that's it, really it, helped <laughs> like it really helped me going like, yeah because i had to plan it out i'm like look I can't go today, so that means I got to go Saturday and Sunday if I want to go three days a week. And and I held myself to that when I could. Yeah, and like the you know we're saying uh, you either completed it or you or you failed or whatever. But yeah, like because you got to be not, honest with yourself, right? But it's not it's not real failure in that you you didn't do, that you did zero days. You know, it's like you you set a pretty lofty goal and maybe you didn't reach that goal, but every day you went to the gym was probably a net benefit for you that day. And you, and you yeah. went way more than you probably would have went if you hadn't set a goal at all. If I hadn't been so intentional about it. So, yeah, I'm like, uh, yeah. I, I be honest, like a hand in the air. If I didn't make it, I didn't make it, period. But um, there, there's not like you didn't make it and you're a piece of shit. Like, uh, right. Or you didn't make it and you completely failed at it. Like I failed, but I also grew a lot and worked really hard. And uh, and um, I'm I'm happy with myself. And, and yeah. Uh, all of them but one, and I'll tell you which one it is that I'm bummed <laughs> out about. Uh, but um, I wanted to read five books, okay? I read three books by March, yeah, um, and I ended up with like 4.6 <laughs> that I finished. <laughs> yeah. Um, so this year I read uh, Phil by Alan Shipnuck, which is a book on uh, about Phil Mickelson, um, the golfer. Very interesting book. It talks some very funny stories about him uh, gambling and a, and a bunch of stuff like that. Um I read a book called Unveiling Alice, uh, written by a friend of mine, Mary Crocker. Um, our friend Nate uh, Dusty, his, uh, his sister. Oh, um, cool. She read. She wrote a book. It's a. It's kind of. It's fictional, but it's about something that happened to her personally. Um, she was slated to get married, and um, her uh, fiance broke up with her like right before the wedding. Like, not everybody was there dressed and all that stuff, but like a month before the wedding or something like that, when they were already picking up their stuff. Yeah. Um, and she wrote a really cool book that taught me about, like, I learned a lot about how women think and how women work um, through reading the book. Uh, it's really cool. So, yeah, um, yeah it's, it's cool to read something that somebody you know wrote. Um, I read The Old Man in the Sea by Ernest Hemingway, uh, which I've talked about a couple times on the podcast. And uh, that book has really, like, in while reading it, I didn't realize how many times throughout the year I'd think about it or like refer to it because I didn't realize like how profound and like how much it could teach you um, just by reading it. Um, it's a, it's it's technically a short story; it's only like 150 pages or something like that. But um, very good. I Hemingway has a really odd, like kind of a odd way of writing he's got a weird way of using the english language and sometimes it's off-putting if you um like at the beginning of the book because you're not used to it but well, and um, brisk too right like he's got like real short sentences that... yeah that's he uses <laughs> yeah. yeah he breaks things up with periods a lot in very interesting ways and um i really liked it uh, i i like that's kind of a you know that's one of those books that a lot of people are um are assigned to read in high school and i understand why high school kids don't like it um the old man in the sea is something you should read on your 30th birthday or later you know yeah. um but i think i think everybody should read it it's uh, uh i'd say i well yeah i was gonna say every man but like it it talks about you know aging and the journey of that and dealing with um your body being different uh now and pushing through things and and um and it's everybody should read it. It's great. Um, and then I read the Deltoid Pumpkin Seed, which I was at. <laughs> I was at the last bookstore in L.A. That's kind of a famous bookstore. And uh, I was looking at the classic literature, uh, one of the shelves, and this book just fell over while I was looking at it. And I don't. <laughs> it's, it's not some like hippy dippy. Some ghost knocked it over stuff. I was like, you know what? I'm just gonna grab that one, like, and right. just see what it is. <laughs> Um, and it was this book about these guys who built this aircraft. Um, he, they called it an airship. It was like um, it was like it was like this wingless uh, orange craft that looked like a pumpkin seed. And these crazy like it's, it's just a weird story of like it was started by like this crazy uh, 
evangelical Christian guy and then got bought by a different Christian guy. And then like, it, it's, it's, it's a long story, but it's a good one. I learned a lot about airships in that book about like uh, hot air balloons and the Hindenburg and all this stuff. <laughs> right. Airships are dope, by the way. We fucked up. The Hindenburg was like the worst piece of eight of PR in the history of the world. Um, airships are cheaper. Uh, they can carry more stuff. Uh, they don't put, they don't pollute the atmosphere nearly as much, hardly at all. Um, and we just kind of abandoned them because one blew up. <laughs> so like, well, it's uh, hard again. I think we talked about it too. It's hard to come back from it blew up <laughs> as a, uh, as a piece. And like the, uh, and that visual. Yeah. The, the filming of it made it so much worse, uh, yeah. you know, to, to try to sell to people afterwards. But yeah, it's the, crazy. They, the idea of an airship sounds dope. Well, there's a lot <laughs> of people who are trying to figure out uh, um, how to like ship things with airships, you know, mm -hmm. but they're struggling with like weight displacement. Like when you pick something up, your ship is now heavier, but you don't have more gas. So they'd have to figure out how to fill it with more gas um, or drop something. So you'd have to what they what they proposed was. Uh, the, the, what people have proposed is you go and you're, you say you're picking up because these things can pick up like multiple 18 wheelers, like giant things. So you go and you but you have to pick you have to bring something that weighs the same as what you're picking up. Right. That's like the so like you have to bring like a bunch of sand that's the size of an 18 wheeler. I was going to say you got to do the, the Indiana Jones trick. And, yeah, exactly. And switch it out, you know. Yeah. So they're trying to figure that out. But uh, the deltoid pump, pumpkin seed was surprisingly interesting I, I really enjoyed it so now i'm reading um what the heck is that book called i've talked about it multiple times on this uh i'm looking it up right now uh, empire of the summer moon um it's about uh, uh the rise and fall of the comanche tribe in the united states um, um okay that sounds cool this book has given me such a like wild per like it gives you so much perspective as to what it was like living in the 1800s in the United States. Uh, you learn a lot about the history of the United States uh, when it comes to like Spain and France, because there was times when it was, you know, uh, like English colonialist families, right? And French and the French army and the Spaniards all like converging and taking different parts of this continent at the same time. Um, and they were all killing Indians and, um, yeah. And well, and Indians were killing each other and Indians were doing some horrible things to each other. And we were yeah. doing horrible things. To them. It was a crazy time. But um, this book, uh, the Comanche tribe was pretty remarkable um, in the way that they learned how to fight on on um, horses and they learned how to breed horses. And they were they weren't like a super religious tribe in terms of like how people um kind of stereotype native americans for being uh they were like sp spiritual in certain ways but they weren't like you know um uh doing rain dances particularly and stuff from what i understand but it follows i haven't even gotten to this part because this, this book isn't long but it's kind of dense like i'm more than halfway through it but it it's follows this uh, this guy who um the comanche tribe uh kidnapped a white woman um, in the, I think, 1840s. Her name was Parker. I can't remember what her first name was. Uh, she ended up being really famous because she refused to leave the Comanche tribe when she got older. Um, she wanted to stay. She was married to a Comanche. She had children, all these things. And one of her children ended up being one of the best Comanche chiefs, like war chiefs, and like a crazy warrior named Quanah Parker. And um, they've, they've the book's kind of annoying. It like skips time all the time. Mm -hmm. But um, super fascinating, super fascinating. Yeah. Where it's talking about like Colt invented the revolver when uh, the Texas Rangers were were struggling to kill Comanches because Comanches could uh, shoot a bunch of arrows in the time that it takes you to freaking fire your pistol and then pack it and put another ball in it and <laughs> right. all that stuff. So Colt invents the revolver, and it completely changed the, changes the game. But the only people who really understood what the what the revolver um meant for combat were the texas rangers so not enough people bought them so they just disappeared for a while 
uh, because no, there was no demand for it. Even the army didn't want them when it was like we didn't have repeating revolvers. Uh, it's a crazy story. It's it's really cool. Yeah. Um, in the book category, uh, real quick, I wanted to recommend a couple of the audiobooks I listened to this year. Uh, Opposable Thumbs, the story of uh, Siskel and Ebert. I think you, even as not a huge movie person, I think you would really like that book. Cool. Um, it's like, because uh, Siskel and Ebert weren't friends, like, ever. They <laughs> they they wrote for competing newspapers, and they worked on the show together, and they were contemporaries, but, like, they didn't hang out, and they didn't, like, love on each other, and it was, like, a very adversarial kind of relationship, and that's why the show was so successful in a lot of people's minds, and why they're, like, the the thing you think of when you think of film criticism, essentially. Um, yeah, everybody thinks of Siskel and you. And that's, it's very similar to Penn and Teller. Like, they don't, they're not adversarial, but the, even Penn now will say, like, if you ask me who my best friend in the world is, it's it's Teller. But we don't hang out. We've never, like, been really friends. We just, like, we, we, we worked well together on stage and we had similar visions. Yeah. Well, and, like, whenever Gene Siskel had cancer, he never told Roger Ebert, how sick he was or, or that he even had uh, cancer for a while. Uh, Roger Ebert heard about it from the actual like press releases and stuff. Like they didn't share their lives with each other aside from this fact that they worked with each other for like 40 years, which is crazy to think about. But like, yeah. And that's the, the cancer thing's interesting. Cause like, I'd be pissed at you <laughs> if you didn't tell me because I got a podcast to plan. Right. Like, I, you got to plan ahead. If if I if you're gonna die next month, I need to know because I need to find your successor. Right, the, but good luck, you know, finding somebody who'll take my place. You can't yeah. replace a Gary Bertier. You can't replace a Dusty Godwin. No. You can, and you couldn't break up Tango and Cash. That's, <laughs> uh, sorry, that's I also could, true. Yeah. So, uh, sorry. Go ahead with your your remaining goals. But yeah, I think that's great. You, you should check that book out. It's cool. Yeah, for sure. Um, the last one, four months of complete sobriety. Now, <laughs> uh huh. I did January, right? Um, I didn't drink a lot this year. Like I, I didn't, I didn't over drink. Um, but I didn't do any other months of complete sobriety. I went weeks, you know, incidentally, yeah. but I didn't do like a full month. So, uh, we're gonna run that back with three months. Uh, by the way, um, okay. I'm, I'm not. Look, not gonna do four months. You're hobnobbing. You're at radio events. You're going. That's to, the thing. You're going to. You're playing. You're playing golf with Mrs. Parker. Like, you know. How am I supposed to schmooze? Yeah. <laughs> you uh, yeah. So liquor yeah, only I, I, unlocks your charms. You know. That's a hundred percent to yeah. a point. <laughs> right. 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 <laughs> then eventually, I'm just over talking to the Uber driver about what country he's from. Ask yeah. Kai about that. Um, <laughs> I took two. I, we we took a, a Uber driver. Uh, I was like, well, "Where are you from?" He's like, "Guess." And I was like, "Egypt." He's like, "No." I said, "Jordan." He goes, "Yes." <laughs> two <laughs> two guesses. I got it right. That's better than um, the movie game. You got that? Yeah, it's pretty good. It's pretty good. Um, okay, cool. So I have one, two, three. I actually have eight. I think I got some momentum. Really. Okay. Um, not all these are like. Uh, well, most of them, yeah. So uh, I want to run fifty miles, not in a row. Right. Yeah, not gonna, at once. You're gonna ultra marathon it. Fifty, like fifty separate times. I want to run. A, I want to run a mile this year. Um, uh, or like I run two miles one day, or something like that. Yeah. Uh, probably not, but it'll probably be fifty separate miles. I've found myself being able to run a little bit more. Um, I uh, I found that cardio is um something I can do without losing a bunch of weight. I'm glad I was able to test that, and um. It sucks. I hate running. It sucks ass. Um, I I run a mile in like nine and a half minutes, nine minutes, and it feels like it took me twenty five minutes. I'm like, I try not to watch the thing on the thing. And by the way, why don't treadmills just let me put in? I want to run a mile in nine minutes. Put me at that speed. I got to figure. Out, I got to look up fucking uh, <laughs> conversion uh, charts. Char and, yeah. Conversion charts because it's like, no. If you want to run it in nine minutes, you got to put it at six and a half. Why? Just let me put nine minutes in there and start going as fast as I need to go to run in a mile in nine minutes. Like, I don't understand how that's not a thing. Yeah. There's probably treadmills out there, but the standard treadmill doesn't have that option. That's stupid. But um, 
Yeah, so I want to run 50 miles this year. Um, that's less than one a week. So I, I think I can pull that one off. Um, I'm running back the 147 pounds thing. Okay. Uh, because I think I can do it um, with, with certain uh, changes to how I've done everything. Um, you know, my my health is always a wild card, but um, I'm I'm figuring some stuff out, and I think I can do it. So I'm, I'm running back the 147 uh uh, pounds thing. I am starting, I believe a little lighter than I was last year. So it's going to be a little bit harder than it would have been, but, um, I, I believe in myself. I think I can do it. So, um, uh, running back to gym three times a week, uh, that was good for me. Uh, so I, I'm not really counting the ones I'm running back as much. Right. Um, running back to three gym three times a week. It was good for me. Uh, I, I didn't really have a hard time doing it except for when I got sick and stuff. And I, maybe this year I will try to make up for the ones that I don't get. Um, but, uh, we'll see. Um, so a couple of professional things. Um, I want to interview a celebrity, um, somebody who is a celebrity to me, somebody that makes me nervous. Um, because, you know, I interviewed Bobby Brown this year. Uh, it was cool. I was super nervous until we started going and it went really well. Um, I was happy with it. I'd like to get somebody that uh, I admire, somebody that I have um, that I have knowledge of, that I don't I don't have to do so much research and stuff like that. But if I do have to research, that's fine. I mean, I'll probably research no matter who it is. But I would like to interview somebody who uh, makes me nervous. Um, so, and then um, I want to get to 900 Instagram followers. Um, Where are you at now? I'm. A six forty eight, I think. Okay. Uh, so I, I need I need like two hundred and fifty followers, uh, which is a lot uh, comparatively. I mean, it's a large percentage, but um, I'm doing more around town. Um, I I just want because that's kind of a showing of like growth of like right. especially in Bakersfield of um, people knowing who I am. So uh, that's something I'd like to try. I don't like being a public figure with a low follower count, but listen, I'm not for everybody, you know. Right. People yeah, don't you're like a, you're a special people spice, don't like ha- you know? people don't like handsome, funny, smart uh, single guys. You know, yeah. Um, so <laughs> they're, too, they're too dangerous. Yeah. yeah. So yeah. those are the professional ones. I'm probably going to cordon those off, but I'll probably still uh, mention them on the final podcast. Um, I want to learn how to cook 15 new meals. Oh, I like that one a lot. That sounds fun. Yeah. Yeah. So. I thought about 12 because that's one a month, but I think I can squeeze in one every two weeks because uh, yeah. I, I wish I had more time to cook. But um, I've, I've really enjoyed learning how to cook. Um, I've gotten stuck on stir fry because it's very easy and I don't have time to learn something else. I've gotten better at stir fry. I made some uh, cabbage soup the other day. I saw your not... uh, your video. Looked, it looked yeah. good. looked good, man. I got a, yeah, I got a, uh, I got a Dutch oven for, uh, for Christmas. <laughs> so... And then um, what they get you as a present. Yeah, I know. <laughs> hey. I, I can't get that praised by anybody, bro. I Comedy, just want to move on. You know? I know. Yep. Hey, you got me. Son of a bitch got me. Uh, so, uh, yeah, I want to learn how to cook 15 new meals. Um, that includes, I mean, like the cabbage The cabbage soup would have counted, you know. Um, yeah. It doesn't count, but I want to learn I, I want to learn 15 new ones because I like learning the techniques. And uh, it always teaches you, like, um, the chemistry. Part of the reason that I didn't read all the books that I wanted to read is because I got this book, Salt, Fat, Acid, Heat, which is a book to basically teaches you how to cook. Um, and it's, it's hearty. It's hearty. So yeah. I, a, lot of the, a lot of the time that I was going to spend reading, I spent either cooking or reading that book about cooking. Um, um, do you have a Pinterest? I do. Yeah, I, I use it. Uh, yeah, I would say like a lot of recipes that I learned or tried, I got from Pinterest. Um, and most of them are pretty easy and pretty cool. And you can like curate it to things that you're thinking that you want to make, you know. And uh, I found some really yeah. cool stuff on there that's like not impossible for even someone with my cooking expertise to make. Yeah, yeah for sure. I'm, I, I definitely I use Pinterest a lot, um, especially because it's quick. You're like this is the kind of the thing I want to make. Then you put it in and like 50 things pop up. Yeah. So yeah, I use Pinterest. So, um, no tobacco Ooh. from January 1st to December 31st. Okay. Um, 
that uh, I have I have loved tobacco for a long time. Um, I I like smoking cigarettes with friends. I don't buy packs, but I smoke love smoking cigarettes with friends. I love smoking cigars on the golf course. I'm not allowing myself to do any of that right. at all throughout uh, 2023, 2024. I, I need to rewire my brain uh, to where I say no, right when that is around me. I always say yes. Uh, well, always, but you you've had stretches since I've known you where you've given up tobacco for like oh, periods yeah. of time, you know. Oh so, yeah, I made I made not, a year and a half. Not to say that that's still not a lofty goal. I like the goal. I've just said like the willpower. I know it's in there. It's just oh yeah, you know it's hard. To... Yeah, I just made it tangible this time. I, yeah. I I because I, I need to. My problem is like I said, like I'll I'll go play golf and everybody will have cigars and I'll say yes, which yeah. still like isn't a big deal but it is for somebody who's like a former addict it's like hey i know you used to like heroin but we're doing little bumps of oxy back here um and you can only do, <laughs> right. only have to do it once you know we're and just, i'm like oh, i can do it once you know just doing then, an itsy bitsy amount of heroin back here if you want yeah and, <laughs> and then i'm just eating uh uh swisher sweets you know yeah. so um Zero imagine tobacco. The, imagine the cutest amount of heroin you can. That's the, that's the amount we're doing back here. Yeah, for sure. Um, and then uh, the last one, uh, three months of complete sobriety. So okay, I'm doing I'm doing January, and I got to find two more months throughout the year where um, I don't drink. Um, all, basically, all I do is drink. I don't. I used to smoke a lot of weed, but I don't smoke weed anymore. So yeah, um, yeah, three months of complete sobriety. I I need to cl- like. Uh, it's it, January of last year. That's the funny thing was so sweet. It was awesome. Like I was like, man, this is great. Yeah. Um, and it like reset my habits. Like I, I didn't like think about when I, when I went out to places, I didn't like immediately want to have a drink. Uh, I, I never had alcohol in my house, like almost through the, throughout the whole year because of January specifically, like I've never had a drinking problem at all or even close to it. But there's a difference between having a drinking problem and drinking more than you want to. And me drinking more than my want to, than I want to is even me drinking once a week. I almost, I, I want to drink very occasionally, you know? So. Yeah. I, I've fallen into the same boat, uh, like sort of incidentally would, but it's, and it's mostly because like I forget or I don't really like, it's not something that I think of as like a leisurely activity or anything. Um, yeah. And like, it can be, you know, and there are times where I've thought like, oh man, it'd be nice to have like a drink right now and then, you know, uh, watch this show or do this thing and relax. Mm-hmm. But I also like, I don't really ever feel that good after I drink, uh, regardless of how much or how little I drank. I don't feel very good. Um, You're talking about immediately after? No, like the next day. Oh just, yeah. Like I don't get a hangover. My hangovers are fu- oh man, dude. Like I, just... I I don't get hangovers. I just like my stomach and stuff like it just doesn't it doesn't do things that are like nice for me, you know. Well, you have that sleep goal, right? So right. uh one thing about drinking is one drink makes you you it, as soon as you drink one drink, you have uh signed up for worse sleep that night, no matter what. You might feel like you slept like a rock because you passed out or because you fell asleep easier, but you won't have the quality of sleep that you would have had had you not drank at all. So Right. And and um it just yeah, it's not it's it's also just not good for you. Like it's pu- you're putting uh and I'm not the moral arbiter here, you know, people who want to drink whatever, but like Make yeah. no mistake, you are you are putting poison in your body. The reason you get drunk is because your body is like, we got to get rid of this thing, you know. That's the that's the funny thing now about like, uh, unfor- well, and no, we, I I don't want to say funny and then say this. Uh, uh, what's his name from from Friends, who died? Uh, oh, Matthew Perry. Matthew Perry. Matthew Perry overdosed on ketamine. Yeah. Um, ketamine is a very powerful, very powerful drug that completely changes your mind state while you're on it right i don't have the the context to know that this is why matthew perry was doing it but a lot of people it's a big trend in in uh la for people to take i uh to take ayahuasca or ketamine to rewire their brain after they've had trauma or depression or ang- or uh, addiction all these things they don't realize and they don't think about is Sure, you're re- you're rewiring your brain, but you are just kind of hitting the random button. 
Like you 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 don't know it's gonna rewire, rewire it in the good ways. Yeah, you know. That's... So like, it's it's this, it's the same thing with a lot of drugs. It's like it's like uh, we've been told that all these things are good for us. Uh, we had to we had to convince the world that weed is good in all occasions and never bad for you, and it cannot be it cannot be negative just so to, so we could get it uh, legalized. But like, Mister Mr. Mackey was right. <laughs> D- dr- drugs yeah. are bad. Drugs are bad. <laughs> yeah. uh, well, and it's just, yeah, I just, I never feel good. At this point in my life, the payoff for having a nice, like, whiskey or whatever, um, the trade off of that the next day is just not worth it. Cause, like, then the next day I feel like shit. Then I don't want to do any of the good things for myself that I would do otherwise. Like, I don't want to go for a run. And I don't want to go for a walk and I don't want like, you know, it. Oh uh, yeah. I'll never read the night <laughs> that if I took, if I had one drink of alcohol, I, I'm not going to read that night because I'm not going to uh, absorb it. Yeah. Like your brain's different now. Yeah. You know, um, for your running goal, might I say, yeah. I don't know if this is plausible or possible for you. Um, I would suggest trying to find like a running path and do some outside running outside running is always the better option for me. And like running on a treadmill sucks no matter what it sucks. Yeah. Like, yeah, it does even just walking on a treadmill. Like I'll walk on a treadmill on an incline for like 45 minutes or whatever. As soon as that thing starts, I'm immediately thinking, how long have I been on this thing? How much longer do I have to be on it? Like I need to constant distraction to keep me from uh, like trying to get off of this treadmill. But like when you're running outside, at least I found whenever I was running and yes, at one point I ran quite a lot, um, a lot. Yeah. Like running outside, you do feel like you're going somewhere or you're doing something, you know, like there are things you're passing and there are places that you're going and you can feel the distance. And that was a, that was a helpful distraction to have, you know? Yeah. I mean, weather, weather permitting that, that yeah, that's, that's a good idea. Yeah. Um, and if you can the, find like maybe... a trail or something like that's, that's what I used to do. Um, or like, it'd be sick if my gym was exactly a half mile from my house. <laughs> yeah. Or like there used to be a park, like a mile and a half from where I lived. So I would run to the park and then run, you know, couple of miles around it and then and then run home and the whole time i knew like okay there's gonna be about four miles by the time i'm done yeah. but i'm going there and i can feel i again it's the distraction of like actually going somewhere because on the treadmill mm-hmm. for me the frustrating part is like i'm not going anywhere there's no way for me to trick my brain i know i'm just standing in this spot and i'm moving which is good but i'm not going anywhere you know yeah, and there's probably something to be said for actually propelling yourself rather than uh, going with the motion of the treadmill. Yeah, so, running in place. Um, but yeah, that would be my mild suggestion okay. if you if you want to get and plus you do like that's not fake. Like you do get a runner's high. Like there was a there was mm-hmm. a point where I really like I would get up and I'd run five miles in the morning before work, and I wouldn't want to at the beginning. Then I'd start, and by the time I was done. I would feel like this excitement that I did it. And like you, you do get to a point where you do feel like you you've reached a high, you know? Yeah. One thing that I always tell myself when I don't want to go to the gym is I've never left the gym going, man, I shouldn't have done that. Yeah. Like I always leave the gym going, I'm I'm glad I did that, you know? So it's, (laughs) yeah, it can't, I mean, you're, you might be sore and it's some, it's sometimes it's not fun, but like, yeah, I don't think that I've ever done exercise for myself and then uh, not been able to see the positive that came from it. So, oh yeah, a hundred percent. But looking back on our podcast from last year, one of the goals I didn't set and we talked about it was the amount of movies that I was going to see in the movie theater. Um, oh yeah, real real quick. I also said I wanted to cuss less, and I didn't do that. So, right. uh, but that that wasn't a for sure goal. I just said I wanted to cuss <laughs> you less. To try, but dude. I've cussed a lot in 2023. Yeah, I want to. Maybe I'll count my curse words. But oh. yeah, I'd love to hear how many movies you you watch. Um, so I'm capping it now. 
So the the year technically isn't over, but I'll start a new list if I go to the movies this weekend, and that'll be the 2024 list. It'll be like the Oscars. Which you are planning on going to the movies this weekend. I am right? planning on going to the movies this, week, this okay. weekend. So uh, do you want to guess how many movies I saw in the theater? Yeah. Um, it's 52 weekends in a year. Yep. I know of a bunch of weekends where you went to multiple movies. But you probably didn't go to the movies every weekend. Yeah. So let's go with one a week. Let's go 52 movies in the theaters this week. That is not a bad guess. This year, I saw 58 movies in the movie theater. (laughs) God damn. I saw four or five. A new personal best. (laughs) So That's wild. uh, Number one. Started the year off, saw the whale. Ah, okay. okay. Whale! (laughs) (laughs) Number 58, (laughs) capped the year off, Iron Claw. So, you know, book into the year. Which one of those did you, which, which one of those did you like better? Um, probably the Iron Claw. I have some problems, but, uh, overall, I enjoyed the Iron Claw. Like, Okay. Um, now, once I see it, we'll 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 do a recap. We'll do a recap. Yeah. Um, I thought this might be a little fun. We do this a couple of times. You want to just throw a number between one and fifty-eight out, and I'll tell you the movie that I saw that corresponds with that. Oh, number. it's numbered. Yeah. Uh, thirty-six. The thirty-sixth movie I saw this year was the Last Voyage of the Dementor, Dracula movie. <laughs> He's, fuck yeah dude. yeah he's on a boat <laughs> dude uh not a great movie but i a great idea i think for a movie it's just a chapter in Bram stroker's dracula where they're the boat that transports dracula unknowingly to the new world um and he gets out and he kills a bunch of sailors you know but that sounds fun yeah i wished the movie was better it just wasn't as good as the concept was okay to me you know um what is number 23 let's go jordan uh 23 a movie we both saw in the theater the flash god dang yeah. i actually like that movie which i didn't hate i like yeah it's again like it's not great but uh, you know i i didn't have a terrible time i'll say like the same with i went and saw the marvels Uh, a couple weeks ago and the marvels on its own merits as just a movie is a fun movie to watch but like under the weight of like what is this movie supposed to mean and what's going on with marvel and all of that like it's yeah it's not very good like (laughs) all that stuff weighs it down but if you could just see it in a vacuum like it's a fun adventure story all right didn't hate it. <laughs> Will not watch it. Yeah. But uh, I enjoyed The Flash. Um, I'll do one more. Okay. Uh, 17. Number 17 was uh, You Hurt My Feelings, uh, which is a movie that I saw that was Julia Louis Dreyfus uh, and her. She plays a, a female author who secretly finds out that her husband doesn't like her books. Uh, and like she overhears it in a conversation that she's not supposed to hear. And then it turns into this whole thing where like they get in a big fight about it. Uh, pretty fun. I, I enjoyed that movie. I'm looking at the, uh, it had a really good critic score, 94, 64 audience score. Yeah. I um, thought it was like, uh, it's a good idea for a movie. I thought it was a, uh, a good movie. Um, okay. Hell yeah. Shout out a couple of others. Uh, Blackberry with Glenn Howerton from It's Always Sunny and mm-hmm. uh, Jay Baruchel's in it. It's about the guys who invented the Blackberry and the rise and fall of the Blackberry. Not what I would imagine uh, sounds like a scintillating movie on the face of it. Really good movie. Um, I love Jay Baruchel. I was just thinking the other day about uh, where 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 did Jay Baruchel go? Because uh, he was in This Is The End, you know? But, yeah. Um, I haven't seen him in much since, but I haven't watched much since. So he's probably in a bunch of shit. I love Jay Baruchel. Yeah. And Canadian that, hero. Like that movie is crazy. Like the, 
you know, because it ends up being at one point BlackBerry had like a huge market share in cellular phones, and then the iPhone came out and just smashed <laughs> them to pieces uh, and ruined everything. But yeah, it ruined the BlackBerry, ruined the Zune. I'm yeah, gonna, uh, <laughs> BlackBerry just... 98, 98 critic score, ninety four audience score. Yeah, really good. Um, Blue Beetle, which I saw, which is a DC comic book movie. I didn't expect much from it. Really liked it. I liked the family aspect of it way more than I thought I would. It was funny. And then, of course, it becomes like a big punch em up at the end. Like, I was less excited about the CGI fight scenes. I was like, can we go back to, like, the fun family thing that's happening in this movie? Um, but surprised can- by that one. Can you do me a favor? Yes. Can you name somebody who is in the Blue Beetle that isn't George Lopez? Um, I don't know his name, but the yeah, guy who thing. was in the, he's a guy that's in Cobra Kai. Uh, yeah. I was oh, and Susan at it and Sarandon I... is in it. So. Oh, you're cheating. She's not even listed on here. <laughs> She's. The oh, villain. she is listed. Yeah. She is listed. Okay. Uh. That's cool. I like yeah. it when movies where like there aren't a lot of no. Did you know that Jay Baruchel was in a, a hockey movie called Ice Guardians that has a oh five reviews? I was gonna say it has a one hundred percent on the tomato meter. No. Um, and then the uh, t- two more basically. Uh, I saw a French movie called Anatomy of a Fall, which is about uh, a, a family where the husband dies, like he falls off the roof or something happens, but you don't know what happened. And then the movie's essentially this courtroom drama where the mom is trying to prove that she didn't kill her husband. Um, and you as the audience never know if she did or not. And it's like, it's really good. It's in French, but uh, the courtroom scenes are really good. And it's like, it's really tense and it sort of gives you both sides. And at the end I was sort of like, well, I don't know if she did it or not. I'm like <laughs> maybe it was possible. That sounds that sounds very interesting. I'm looking to see. It looks like it's not. It sounds like that sounds like something that'd be based on a true story, but I don't think it is. No, I think it's a or um, just a work of fiction. But it was like it was really good. It's long. Uh, it's like over two hours. But it was I heard about it on a podcast, and then it happened to be playing here, and so I went out of my way to see it. But it was really it yeah. was really good. Two and a half hours. Yeah, two and a half hours. Um, and then my favorite movie of the year was a movie called the holdovers with Paul Giamatti, where he plays like a curmudgeon like boarding school teacher. And it's in the seventies and the, he ends up being the kid, the guy that has to watch any of the kids that don't go home for the holiday season. And there's like this one shithead kid and then him and the kid and the, the lady who has to stay to cook the meals, they all kind of bond. Like it was, it was really good. I think I uh, saw a trailer for this movie. It looks good. Yeah, that is coming I out. I like on, Paul Giamatti. That comes out on Peacock on Friday the 29th. I highly recommend it. That's probably my number one movie of the year that I saw in the theater. Okay. Hell yeah. So, really enjoyed it. 90, 96% on Rotten Tomatoes. Yeah. Hell yeah. Okay. Well, I'm proud of you, Dusty. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> let's see if we can beat it I'm going in for, 2024. I'm going for 60 but again, I'm not putting it on the goal list because, like, it's probably uh, within the realm of, like, it's very likely that I'll go. But uh, this next year, I'm going to break it up, my list, by weekends. So I'm going to keep track of what movies I saw uh, on which weekend. Okay. By weekend. Okay. So, because uh, if I can, I'm seeing three movies this weekend. Yeah, you're going to see, uh, hold on. You told me one of them. I told you two of them. Why is it escaping me? You're going to see... I've, dude, I don't know. I'm, <laughs> I'm drawing a blank. You told me two of the movies. Yeah, I'm watching Wonka. Wonka. Gotta That's ch- the one gotta I was check about. Got to check out Wonka. Um, yeah. Poor Little Things, Hugh Grant. which is the Emma Stone movie where she plays like a... Uh, ah. <laughs> she's like... <laughs> uh, some sort of resurrected body. Per, it's it's directed by a weird director. Uh, it looks, she's got the mind of a child. Yeah, and it's like she gets these experiences, and she's like maybe a robot. I don't know. Anyway, uh, looks weird. Looks interesting. I'm in for it. Uh, mm-hmm. 
And the, the guy who made this directed the movie The Favorite, which also had Emma Stone, if you watched that. Um, and then third, I'm going to try to see Anyone But You, uh, the romantic comedy with Sidney Sweeney and Glenn Powell from uh, Top Gun. New Top Gun. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. All right, so, cool. So we'll see. Sid- uh, you know, we'll see what happens. Uh, but Yeah, I, I, I'm very curious about Wonka. Very, very curious. I um, I wasn't in for, I wasn't into it, and then the guy I found out is the guy who directed Paddington, and those movies are like some of the best, most pure forms of entertainment uh, in the last few years. So I was like, all right, I'll give Wonka a chance. Might as well. It's getting good. It's getting good reviews. It's getting very good reviews. So, um, if if you, I might go see it. I like I like the whole Wonka verse. You know, <laughs> yeah, you're, um, you're a big fan of. Uh, of the whole Wonka verse. Did you know that uh, God said, "Let there be light," and Chuck Norris replied, "Say please." <laughs> I d- I didn't know that. That's uh, I must have forgotten that in my studies. And uh, go sit around the campfire and tell Chuck Norris stories. Okay, that makes sense. Yeah. <laughs> uh, oh, finally. I wanted to do a little bit of math uh, with my my movie situation. My goal every year is to cost the movie theater more money than I paid the movie theater. Um, okay. Because I pay $22 a month for my uh, Regal subscription that lets me see as many movies as I want, right? <laughs> so, and then sometimes I had to pay... For like the VIP so I could see a movie early in the day or some like weird screening uh, where they charge you a little bit of extra money. So I added it all up mm-hmm. and it came to three hundred and thirty eight dollars is what I spent at the movies this year for my subscription plus any ancillary uh, things I had to pay. Right. Did you include popcorn? I did not. In- in- uh, I will do that for this upcoming year, but just okay. Okay. for the movies. Just for the movie itself, yeah. 338 bucks. what it cost me. Now, I saw 58 movies. So if each movie is, I've, five, I've, is let's say each movie is 10 bucks, if I went for the yeah. matinee price, uh, your boy's coming out ahead. So I like that. By a lot, By yeah. a lot, yeah. The movie theater lost money on me this year, which is the goal every single year. Take them for all they got, dude. Yeah, the big movie. Um, um, the movie, the movie theaters made nine billion dollars this year. So uh, anything that I can get from them, it's good for me. What do they chase you down? We can't <laughs> let you have the subscription anymore. Yeah, you've you've cracked the code. We didn't expect it's anyone 40, to go to it's, the movies this much. It's forty bucks a month now, you son of a bitch. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so um, that's awesome. Yeah. I, listen, you're the most prolific movie goer I've ever met. Um, my brother Jacob used to probably give you a run for your money, but he hates the movie theater now. Um, I love the movie theater. I think it's great. It's, yeah. So um, you just don't like it as much as your house. Yeah. Yeah. So, I mean, if my house is open, why am I going to the movie theater? Right. And I, I can watch Survivor here. <laughs> right. I watched, th- I've watched three episodes in one and uh, three seasons in one episode in the last month. That's it. Yeah. Less than a month. Three weeks. That's so many movies. You could watch The Joker <laughs> so many times. Does The Joker have a tribal council, Dusty? I mean, in a way. <laughs> he, d- he does. You know, people, did, people on did, the streets. Does The Joker have a hidden immunity idol, <laughs> Dusty? <laughs> I I don't think so. I don't, uh, is the, does The Joker have Jeff Proust? <laughs> uh, yeah. Jeff's the king. Yeah. You got to keep track of how much Survivor you watch this year, and then we'll compare at the end of the year. Yeah. I mean, like everything else, I'll probably get bored with it. But right. I'll, I, I mean, I'm not, right now I'm, you're three in. Three seasons. So, yeah. Three seasons and one episode in so far. So we'll, we'll keep going. So yeah. chugging along, yeah. dog. <laughs> so, uh, you know, if you want to check in with us, see how we're doing, we've laid out goals that we can uh, succeed or fail at, and uh, you'll be able to know. You know, did, were we huge pieces of trash in 2024 or did we rise to the challenge? I'm going to try. Well, I, we should set a goal. I want to meet two of my goals. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Sub goal. I would like to reach one of my goals. 
Uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. And then that'll count as two goals completed. Uh, We're just stacking goals. Yeah. So uh, anyway. And then, so if you make another goal that you want to match two goals, <laughs> that's three goals. Yeah. And you, you make another one that you want to match three goals. That's, so you're just compounding these yeah, that's a, <laughs> infinite goals. That's the uh, the office space uh, stealing the money plan. It's a penny of a penny of a penny. You know? Yeah. Yeah. So uh, as, as Andrew said at the top, uh, you can follow us on all the socials. Uh, 2024 year of the snart marks uh, is upon us. Thank you to everybody who listens. Uh, thank you to everybody who hung with us uh, through not just 2023, the whole time. You know, thank you uh, for people on YouTube watching our Von Eric breakdown. Also, if you haven't watched the Von Eric breakdown, uh, go check that out. Uh, whether or not you see oh, I should the, have said that. <laughs> whether or not you go see the Iron Claw, um, we re released our old Von Eric's episode, Welcome to Bummer City. Uh, the movie, not quite as Bummer City as the real life situation but pretty brummer city still so uh give that a listen if you want otherwise uh keep hanging with us where the snart marks the year of 2024 <laughs> <laughs>